coming up tonight on KSL Outdoors. We're snowmobiling into the north slope of the High Uintas for some late season ice fishing. Look at that boy. Plus, Outdoors producer Jared Hargrave is backcountry skiing the Tusher Mountains and checking out the Puffer Lake Yurt. I'm Adam Eakle and this is KSL Outdoors. KSL Outdoors with Adam Eakle is brought to you by your local Ford stores. Welcome to KSL Outdoors. I'm Adam Eakle. Tonight's show, we're kicking off in Evanston. We're going to take you up into the high Uintas and go visit a couple of reservoirs I've never been to. We're going to target some big rainbows and hopefully some tiger trout. Just got to fill up our snowmobiles that we got from Valley Recreation and Rental. We're on the road. Hey, Natalie, uh, where are we going? I think we're like somewhere on the north slope of the Uintas today and I believe we're going to a place called Longs Park and yeah. maybe Spirit Lake. You're right between Manila and Dutch John. So you find the Sheep Creek Geologic Loop turn off and then you're going to take Forest Service Road from there. The winter time's a cool new experience so it ought to be rad. From the parking lot it's about eight miles of easy snowmobiling on a snow-packed road to Long Park Reservoir. On the way, you pass 12,000 foot Lighty and Marsh Peaks. It's a pretty ride through Aspen and Conifers, and you can tell no one has been on the trail for days. A lot bigger than I thought it'd be. This 1,200 acre reservoir sits at about 8,600 feet. It's literally loaded with rainbows, and you also have a chance at a brook or cutthroat trout. Biologists have netted this reservoir in the past year and have seen some fish upwards of 20 inches. Thirty inches of ice. <laughs> no slush. A fine February day. Jade got a fish on. Hey, that's a sweet rainbow. And that's a pretty decent fish. We've only been here five minutes. Yeah, five minutes and hit pretty good. First yeah. time on the ice this year. Yeah, first time on the ice. You're a little late. I am a little late. First time and maybe last, but <laughs> it's always a good time. There he, there he is. is. Yeah, there you go. Doesn't feel very big, but it's the first one of the day. Let's see what he got. Oh, pretty rainbow. Nice fish. Okay. That's a good one. Boy, just a beautiful fish. Just a nice 17, maybe 16, 17 inch fish. Got some beautiful colors on him. Check out that. That's some of the prettier rainbows you'll see. Oh, we got another bite. Oh, yeah, this is a good one. Look at this one. Look at that boy. This one, Dean. Yeah, same one. Look at that. Wow, look at the beautiful mouth. Look at the beautiful fish. Pretty fish. Pretty healthy. Let him go. These are usually pretty handy dandy. Power tube. Pink seemed to be the color today as everyone was catching some fish. I switched over to the pink power tube. A rainbow. Well, he'll grow into those nice big ones, right? Oh, I finally put the Haley ring. It's worth it. I got the trophy. <laughs> like Clint said, it's not, it's not that easy to catch the smallest fish. Well, it's quality fishing. In this case, we have quality fish. Not too bad. A couple weeks ago, I was up here and caught some that were pushing 20 inches, some nice rainbows. And, and in our netting surveys, we got brookies that were uh, pushing 18 inches as well. So it's really quality fishing. I mean, this is gorgeous scenery. We're sitting on the north slope of the Uinas. Well, that's not bad fish. The other allure, though, is getting away from the crowds. It's obvious that nobody's been here for probably three some days at least. Lots of little guys like that running around. The allure to me is just getting out and enjoying it and, and getting remote. Oh, that was oh. oh, that was double. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> I'm glad it's your pole and that you got the big one at least, man. <laughs> Coming up next on KSL Outdoors, we take a look at a project biologists have been working on to restore native cutthroat populations to the area. Plus, it's awesome skiing. I mean, we didn't see any other ski tracks. Backcountry skiing the Tushers while enjoying the warmth of a Mongolian style yurt. But first, let's dive into tonight's Burt Brothers quiz question. Long Park Reservoir is located within the 1.3 million acre Ashley National Forest. The history of the Ashley National Forest is as colorful as the people who first inhabited the area. From Native American, European trappers, explorers, settlers, even outlaws. Our Burt Brothers quiz question tonight is, who is the Ashley National Forest named after? The answer when KSL Outdoors, powered by Ford, returns to the Hyuenas. KSL Outdoors is also brought to you by Fish Tech Outfitters, Utah State Parks, Burt Brothers, Sportsman's Warehouse, Evanston, Wyoming, and Camp Chef. Welcome back to KSL Outdoors. Back here in the North Slope of the High Uinas, I'm Adam Eekle. Hey, in a moment, we're gonna try a different lake for a different species. But first, tonight's answer to our Burt Brothers quiz question. And our question tonight is, who is the Ashley National Forest named after? Here's the answer. In 1825, General William Henry Ashley, co-owner of the Rocky Mountain Fur Company, explored the Green River and the Uinta Mountains in search of beaver pelts. Ashley devised the rendezvous system in which trappers, Indians, and traders would meet annually to exchange furs, goods, and money. His innovations in the fur trade earned Ashley a great deal of recognition, and this is who the Ashley National Forest is named after. We are at Spirit Lake. It was part of the Middle Fork Sheep Creek treatment for cutthroat trout. Nationally, there's been a big push to bring native fish species back to their historic range. In Utah, it's no different. The DWR and others have been working for decades on Bonneville, Yellowstone, and Colorado River cutthroat trout restoration programs. The Sheep Creek drainage, where we are today, is one place the Colorado River cutthroat trout used to thrive. So in 2012 and 2013, biologists began the process of removing non-native fishes in the streams and lakes of the Sheep Creek drainage and restocking genetically pure Colorado River cutthroat trout. So we did a collection of cutthroat from the North Fork with backpack collector fishers. We had some pretty big crews. Then we'd store those fish in some live containers in the stream and we'd haul those out. We hauled a, hauled a batch to the Middle Fork using horses with Alex's help. The UHP helicopter came in one day and flew them over the mountain to the other lake that we're putting them in now. It's just a huge restoration project for cutthroat on this whole north slope. In the 1990s, a decline in the Colorado River cutthroat trout's historic range led some to petition the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service to protect the trout under the Endangered Species Act. It was determined that the fish didn't warrant a listing, in part because of the actions of our DWR to restore the trout to its natural waters. They've been petitioned twice that I know of to actually be listed. So. If they're listed, that takes that management authority away from us and places it in the hands of Fish and Wildlife Service. If stuff goes on an endangered species list, it's a whole other world of what you have to do to be able to recreate, fish, everything. And that's what this whole program in the northeastern region was created for. And there's been massive projects, North Slope, South, South Slope, and in the Lake Canyon area, just trying to conserve, protect, enhance everything that we can do. It's going to take some time for the DWR to develop a brood source of these Colorado River cutthroat trout to populate more waters on the North Slope. In the meantime, there's a decent one. Hey, there's a tiger. The sterile tiger <laughs> trout was stocked to give anglers an opportunity to catch some fish. He's not very big. And speaking of catching fish, a few weeks ago we told you about plans to hold a cutthroat slam here in Utah. It'll start up April 1st. What you have to do is catch all four species of native cutthroat trout found in Utah in their native ranges. The Colorado River cutthroat trout in the Sheep Creek drainage would satisfy one species requirement. To me, the importance of the cut slam is, is big time from an education and outreach perspective. There he is. Of getting people to realize the importance of the resources that are native to our state. I mean, it's, it's part of our heritage. 
when you look at it. Honestly, from a fly fisherman perspective of my own, I, I prefer to go after cutthroat trout just because they're more apt to bite. And, and in most cases, we'll get equal growth probably on a cutthroat trout versus a brook trout. I've done the Wyoming Cut Slam and I can't wait to do the Nevada one. It's enticing to me to go and do that type of thing. Well, the fish were a lot bigger and the fishing was a lot faster at Long Part than here at Spirit Lake, but you can't beat the beauty here at 10,000 feet. And hey, if you do catch any of those cutthroat trout, biologists are asking that you release those Colorado River cuts so that they can try to get established here in the drainage. Time now to head back to the guys at Fish Tech for tonight's fishing report. Hi, I'm Dan Smith from Fish Tech Outfitters. I get questions about sinkers and how they're used and what's the right sinker for the proper situation. Probably the number one sinker is a split shot. That's used probably 90% of the time when you want to just put a little extra weight on a spinner or something. Drop shot weight, that's for on the bottom of your line, you have the hook coming out the, above the sinker. The trolling sinker, which is a banana sinker. So you tie your line on this end, and then you put a leader to whatever you're trolling, like a flatfish or a Rapala. You got a bullet weight. That's for plastic worms to where it goes right up on the nose of the worm. Then you've got slip sinkers. You've got a flat round one, egg sinker. You've got a bass sinker, and then you've got a great big heavy ball sinker. Then there's the bell sinker. A lot of guys sturgeon fish and use these. They'll put it onto a three-way and drop the line down to it. So this line's a little bit less poundage than the main line. So if you get snagged, you can break it off. If you have any questions on the proper sinker for the proper application, come on down to Fish Tech and we'll help you out. Now for tonight's fishing line. Welcome back to KSL Outdoors. I'm Jared Hargrave. You know, as a backcountry skier, the Wasatch Mountains are pretty spectacular. But the winter's not complete unless you go on a backcountry year trip. We're hanging out at the Puffer Lake Yurt in the Tusher Mountains above Beaver, Utah, making turns in high alpine bowls and cold snow in the trees. We're about to skin up to the Puffer Lake Yurt. A nice balmy day here in the Tusher Mountains. The yurt is located below the 11,000 foot summit of City Creek Peak. It's only a two and a half mile hike. On a pretty well packed road through some beautiful scenery. And we make it to the yurt before noon. We try to keep the yurt stocked with uh, amenities such as, you know, uh, bunk beds. We have sleeping pads here in the yurts. Uh, we also have uh, a stove and uh, little uh, wood stoves for heat. After checking our avalanche beacons, we skin up City Creek Peak to see what we can ski. You don't have to stray very far to get good runs here, I think especially when you're already at this high of an elevation. Um, it, it wasn't much work to find good turns. Ski terrain's pretty nice. We've got a lot of mellow tree runs, uh, low angle slopes, and then we've got a lot of bigger stuff back a little further in the backcountry. We got about six inches over the weekend, so we got some nice powder runs and some nice corn skiing. Actually, I was a little skeptical. I think we tend to be a little snobby with the Wasatch, and we assume that the snow can't be better anywhere else. The fact of the matter is, if there's snow and you can turn in it, I, I still have a good time in it, and this snow turned out to be much better than I expected. There is kind of that rustic simplicity of getting back from skiing and then getting to work, doing the chores chop wood. We've got to get out here and get snow melt for water and oh, yeah. prepare our meals and, and get a fire going. It is such a uh, novel experience really to be doing this and sort of be removed from civilization even for a few days. That's where we ski yesterday from the summit down the ridge. Took the chute down. It was good uh, Good corn snow. So 
So we had some good runs and uh, we did a bunch of the back side of the mountain. It was good powder in the morning and then it warms up and then we had some good corn skiing the rest of the day. The terrain is really good. It's, it's not too steep. Pretty easy to skin up on any of these hills and beautiful views. Luckily we got some good sunshine and, and, and incredible views in all directions. Time you're out with friends skiing, you're pretty much guaranteed no matter what happens, no matter what doesn't turn out the way you plan, you're still having a good time because you're on skis, it's better than working and you're with friends. To book your own your trip to the Tusher Mountains, check them out online at skitusher.com. Now let's send it back to Adam for this week's Utah Field Guide. Did you know that backcountry skiing is one of the fastest growing snow sports in the world? I didn't. And it just so happens that outdoors producer Jared Hargrave just finished a book with 99 routes all over Utah. It took you a long time. Yeah, it took me about three seasons of nonstop <laughs> research every single weekend. Yeah, tell people about the book a little bit. I've looked through it and I know it's from north to south, east to west, mm -hmm. on every big range in Utah. Yeah, there's 99 routes in the book from the Bear Rivers to the Wasatch to the Okers, the LaSalle's, the Tushers, the Henry's, the Abajos, pretty much every major mountain range in Utah. And your book is really uh, specific in that you can drive and then walk to all these routes, correct? Yeah, they're all day tours pretty much. So from the time you park your car to the trailhead, you can ski the route and be back in your car before dark. All right, and you skied every one of these? I did ski every single one of the, <laughs> the routes in this book. And uh, I'd say uh, my wife Calista is a saint for letting me do it for three seasons straight. I was never home. Oh, I bet, I bet. And where can people find it? Uh, the book's available on Amazon.com, BarnesandNoble.com, and MountaineersBooks.com. And there are a few brick and mortar stores here in Utah where you can find it as well. Well, if you're a backcountry skier, check it out. I'm sure you won't be disappointed. Jared puts a lot of work into the outdoor show. I'm sure he did the same for the book. Time now to check out that recreation forecast. Welcome back to KSL Outdoors. I'm Adam Eaglewell. I'm standing in front of a new sportsman's warehouse here in South Jordan. That's right. A new store is opening up here in March. It's easy to find. It's right off of Bangador Highway and the South Jordan Parkway right across from Costco. And coming up on April 7th, Sportsman's Warehouse stores across the state are holding what they call Ladies Night. It's a chance for ladies to go and get some great deals, some giveaways, and maybe some seminars on fishing, hunting, and camping. For all the information, you can check our outdoors calendar page right there on our website at ksltv.com. Well, Alex, we kept a few and you wanted to smoke some, huh? Yeah, I got to try some, take them home, yeah. them up, so. Well, you can't beat them. Look at the color on them. Yeah, neat color, dark color. Got a yeah. little color there on, on top of that dorsal fin. It's pretty neat looking fish. Yeah, beautiful fish up here. And I'll tell you what, the, the background here is amazing as well. When you come up, the high you winners bring your camera. Take a lot of pictures and submit them to our snapshot contest. Now time to turn it over to you for the best of the week, our snapshot of the week. We kick it off with a cute kid and one huge shed. Macy had begged her dad to take her horn hunting and so dad obliged and took Macy for a walk in the foothills above her home. To his surprise, not 10 yards off the main trail, Macy found a shed antler and it was a toad. Looks like dad has another hunting partner in the family. While up in the Hyuinas on the muzzleloader elk hunt, Austin came across what he thought was a squirrel chasing a rabbit. It turns out it was this weasel catching its dinner, this hare. Austin says the weasel held on to the rabbit just long enough for him to grab this pitcher before running off. Corey watched our show on Lost Creek a few weeks ago and decided to take our advice and head up. He says he caught some nice cutthroat, but this big bow was the fish of the day. Corey says he released the big fish in hopes that some lucky kid would get the same chance. Brian, Doug, and Larry had an epic fishing trip to Pyramid Lake in Nevada a few weeks ago. They were casting eight weights for two solid days. Doug says it felt as if their arms would fall off, but they caught some huge cutthroats that they quickly released to fight another day. But our winner tonight took a drive to get out of the smog and came away with some cool snapshots off his hunt. Caden, Caleb, and Parker decided to make the drive down to Hatch Ranch, just west of Green River. Caden had his GoPro mounted on his shotgun and happened to capture this snapshot of him downing this ringneck rooster. Caden says the hunt was awesome and being with his buddies in the great outdoors made it even better. Memories he'll never forget. A great shot, Caden, that has won you our big prize from Camp Chef for having the snapshot of the week.
Remember, submit your pictures or video plus a brief explanation of your latest outdoor adventures online at ksltv.com. The winner each week wins a Camp Chef Striker Stove, perfect for a quick lunch on the ice or in the backcountry. It's always nice to have a warm meal at any outdoor adventure. Camp Chef, the way to cook outdoors. Not very big. Well, for uh, not having a lot of big fish in it, it's sure a pretty place, isn't it? And not a lot of people, obviously. It is a pretty place. And there's no one here right now besides <laughs> us. <laughs> and in the summer, though, I imagine quite a few people come up. It gets pretty busy, but it's also kind of secluded, so you can pick the right weekend and have it all to yourself. Hey, there's still a little winter left, so get your family, your friends, get up into the high you win us, explore some of these lakes. Well, I'd be going back to Long Park tomorrow if I had another day off. And get out with your family and friends and get outdoors. I'm Adam Eagle, KSL Outdoors. We'll see you next weekend. Good night.